Right, I'm going to quickly go through the, uh, the project. Um, in your handout, you've got some slides and you've got um, a document uh, which describes the marking scheme, and you've also got a document which describes the submission procedure. This morning, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the slides so that you know what the project is about. We can go through the, the details of the submission uh, procedure some other time. Okay, so as you know, the, uh, the project, <laughs> if I can get my machine working, There we go. Um, <coughs> what you have to do is you have to produce um, a, uh, a single-user internet game. And maybe the easiest way to illustrate this is actually to go to one of the examples. So if I have a look at, let's see, here we are, the course web page, and then go down to these examples here. And let's have a look at this one, for instance. Okay, so here we've got a character. Um, I've forgotten how to make him jump. <laughs> Anybody spot? <laughs> and he's oh, that's an, oh, there we go. He's killed himself several times already. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> if I could work out. Uh, Let's go back and try. Let's try this one. Okay, here we have a more manic. Ah, oh, there we go. Excellent. Right, okay. Okay, now, so what we've got here is we've got a couple of animated characters. Um, and we've also got some second order motion. So, well, obviously went and ran into the. Uh, okay. So we've got two characters here. And. Oh, <laughs> you can see the second order motion, right? The second order motion is the sort of bouncing thing where there's a bit of dynamics uh, involved. Um, and each of the characters actually has a slightly different second order motion. So the, gu the guy sitting on top of the cow, right, is bouncing up and down a little bit. Um, the two uh, characters are made out of um, stop uh, uh, a bunch of frames from Sandy's part of the course. Right? So what you have to do is, first of all, you have to create your character in Sandy's part of the course. Let me go back to the, uh, where's me? Okay. So first of all, what you have to do is <coughs> you have to make your animated character. So you can use the, uh, uh, the blue man examples that I've shown you before, but simply replace the, uh, the frames with the frames from your 3D model. And Sandy's shown you how to produce frames from your 3D model. What the what Flex accepts is uh, PNG images, JPEGs, and GIFs. I think. All right, PNGs are probably the ones you want to use because um, they have got transparency. So the uh, GIFs have transpar uh, transparency, and PNGs have got quite a reasonable amount of detail. I think GIFs maybe have a slightly better compression than PNGs. P uh, PNGs have more uh, detail in them. The, uh, the JPEGs don't have any transparency in them, and so they're probably not a good idea because you can't have, obviously, a transparent background. Okay, so you need to uh, produce a bunch of images. I would start off with uh, PNGs and import those images into uh, Flex. Create a flipbook character with them, and the flipbook character should have uh, two or three behaviors. And this is then incorporated into a game where the characters have some dynamic motion or there's some um, other objects which have some dynamic motion as well. Okay, so you've got to uh, form uh, teams of two and each person independently produces uh, the character with their own dynamics. Right? So you have a component 
which is the character. That character contains the still frames which you're going to put together into different behaviors, and it also contains the dynamics of the behavior um, and any methods which you need to control the, uh, the behavior of the character, as we've seen in the last couple of lectures. Okay. Those modules must be produced separately, um, and they're combined into a game. And there must be some, obviously, some objective to the game, um, knocking down the characters or uh, getting the characters to catch, say, maybe a ball or something, something like that. And uh, the the module, or, or rather, this part of the uh, this project represents 50% of the marks, and 30% of the marks are allocated really to the common project and the, uh, the result of the project. And the other 20% are allocated to the individual uh, contributions to the, uh, to the students. And there's interviews to uh, talk about these individual contributions. Um, and if there is too much of an imbalance between, if you like, the marks which are allocated to these two 20% uh, components for the individual students, um, then we reserve the right to change the amount, uh, the proportion of the marks which goes in here. All right? So if it's evident that somebody hasn't really done very much, then it doesn't seem very fair that they get the same percentage of this 30%. 30%. All right? So 20% is um, allocated independently through interviews with both of you and looking at your uh, individual parts of the report. 30% is common, um, but if it's obvious that um, one person has put in an awful lot more effort than the other person, um, then we may well change this allocation up here. All right, any questions on that at all? No? Okay. With the demonstration, um, you need to be able to uh, recompile your application. Right. So you must uh, do it on a machine which has got flex on it. So it can be your own, uh, own machine or it can be one of our machines, uh, but you must be able to, to dem uh, demonstrate some changes to it. I'll have a think about that, actually. We'll, we'll, um, I'll give you the, the, the details of the, um, the interviews um, and the submission procedures, etc. later on. Okay, so requirements. Um, most of these are fairly obvious because you can see the, uh, the example game on the games on, the, uh, on my web pages. Um, so the games must include two sets of animated characters and uh, other simple dynamic objects such as balls, etc. The, uh, the animated characters should really have some dynamical behavior as well. So you should be able to uh, associate dynamical behavior with those. Um, users must be able to obviously affect the character's behavior using mouse or keyboard or some sort of, in or some sort of input. Um, and each character must have at least two different beha behaviors, e.g. walking, falling, throwing, jumping, whatever. At least one character and one object must uh, exhibit uh, second order motion, second order dynamics. Uh, player score uh, should be recorded in, t in a MySQL database, and there should be at least three levels of difficulty. Right, this here is in terms of the, uh, the scores being recorded in the MySQL database. Um, that's not going to attract any mar marks, so if you miss this bit out, then you're not going to lose any mar marks uh, from that part. However, um, last year what we did was we got uh, the local Adobe office um, to sponsor a prize, and we picked what we thought were the four best ones and uh, showed those to the local Adobe office, and they gave a prize for the, what they considered to be the best out of the, out of the four. Right, now, in order to be presented as a prize, then, um, we want this function, the recording of marks, um, to be uh, in, the, in the actual project. Right. Now, I haven't confirmed that with um, uh, <coughs> Adobe for this year, and given... Okay, so um, requirements, yeah, there must be a help section, that's fairly obvious. Um, the source 
code must be modular, so you've got to put uh, to separate it up into uh, different files. Uh, the each module must be written by a single student. All right, so I always get this that um, after the event, somebody comes to a uh, couple come to me and say, "Oh, we've written these these modules together, and we can't separate them. You've got to allocate them to one person or the other person." All right. Um, you can always cut the code up into individual functions and distribute those between different files and then write them separately. But it, what, what this means is that you have to think beforehand about who's going to write what and what the structure of the code actually, actually is. So it forces you to be a little bit more modular. And this is what uh, happens in real life anyway, in real firms. Um, people uh, don't uh, gently write, uh, write code they individually write code, and um, they uh, then maybe have a walkthrough, or uh, the code is rotated onto the next person, uh, and they then uh, use it. Um, but there's a clearly defined separation between some one person writing the code and another person writing the code, and that's got to be evident in the structure of the submission. Okay, so you can use code from my website. You can't use code from outside. All right. So use code from the website, that's fine. You've got to be explicit about which chunks of code you use and how you extend it. Right. So what you could do is you could produce a very simple game which just meets the requirements right, from putting together chunks of, uh, of my code, in which case you will just get a mark. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean it will be quite, <laughs> quite a, path, a, a, a pass mark. Um, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a bit of added value. Uh, I'm looking for a reasonable amount of work on it, which would uh, represent um, a, a reasonable amount of work in another module. Um, teams must consist of two students per team, and you're, uh, there's interviews, uh, marking. So there's a common uh, part to the uh, project. There's then two separate uh, parts, which are contributions from student one, contributions from student two, et cetera. Um, and this is just the bit that I was talking about before, about allocating marks. And then report format. So usual thing, start off with an executive summary. And, and a lot of people say, what nurse is in the executive summary? Right. If I was only to read the half-page executive summary, then that should tell me you know, what's good about the project, why I should play it, um, why somebody should use it, what the main out outcomes are, all right? So that's you trying to sell your project. That's a, a half-page pitch. Um, then there's a description of the game objectives and play. Uh, play. Uh, a little bit on how you develop the game. So keep a diary, keep notes of major design decisions, etc. cetera. Um, overall design, so this is about how the modules fit and how they communicate with one, uh, one another. Um, some joint conclusions, and then part two and part three. These are the two separate parts. Um, and each of these parts has got a summary of the student's role. Um, what else? Um, OK, I've already talked about taking code from the website. Module descriptions. Yeah, uh, yeah this is just fairly normal. Um, and finally, uh, what do you think you've gained from the project? Okay, any questions at all?